Hi guys and welcome back to the October patron only video. Um, this video today, how to be more creative, is something that I'm actually really passionate about. I hope to make a workshops one day where I can teach people some tips and tricks on how to be more creative and do workshops where I'm getting people to think outside of the box and um, change out their normal routine so they're bringing that creativity into their life. Now I make two videos a week on YouTube so I have to constantly be thinking of new creative ideas and I make lots of similar videos so my snail mail videos can be quite repetitive unless I think outside of the box and I think of different ways of doing it. So sometimes when I wake up and I know I have a full day of filming and I'm just not feeling creative, I'll go onto YouTube and I'll watch my favorite YouTubers. So I go to the subscriptions tab and I'll go through and see what other people have created that week. And I follow a lot of people who also make snail mail videos and also do studio vlogs. And watching these and watching them paint or create can inspire myself um, and get some creative juices flowing. And then if I'm still not feeling creative, sometimes it might be that my house is messy. So I usually can't focus in on creative activities when I've got lots of mess and clutter. So I know that might sound a little bit odd thinking, why would you be cleaning to be more creative? But if, if I've just got a lot of things running through my mind, um, I can't allow my mind to then go and do specific tasks because I've got a lot of other stuff going on. So it might be that I just need to clean the kitchen, um, get dressed, like brush my teeth, like do all the morning stuff and get that out of the road. And then a simple act of just like making the bed and then knowing that I've got a clean house means that then I can focus all my time and attention onto these videos. Um, so sometimes just clearing out the mind or even things like clearing out the inbox if I've got a lot of things built up um, because I want to make sure that when I'm making these videos, I'm fully focused in on them. Um, and sometimes when I'm doing projects, I want to fully focus in. I am going to be showing you different ideas of just little things to get yourself more creative and think outside the box in a second. Um, but I also just wanted to run through that you can do really simple things to get yourself into that creative mindset without starting a whole project. So when I used to write a lot of letters, I knew that it was going to take a lot of time and effort to create the letter, make the mail art, make all the little goodies and everything like that. So sometimes I would just do one activity at a time and I would just spend like an hour just making just the mail art. And then I can focus in and just do collaging for that time and I don't have to think of anything else. I just get all my materials and just collage for an hour or so. And then I can move on to other things later if I feel like I've got those um, I'm, I'm feeling more creatively inspired. So what we're going to do today is I'm going to show you a few little activities that I like to do either on my days off or before I start some videos or even things that when I'm feeling like I'm in a bit of a slump or um, sometimes in the middle of videos when I'm doing some repetitive things and I want to just break it up a bit. These are going to be the tasks that I do to, um, yeah, be more creative. <laughs> Um, I just want to quickly go through a list of few things first before I start showing you what I'm going to do. Um, now, before I start creating mail, I will sometimes just go through some Frankie and Flow magazines and just rip pages out that have pictures that inspire me. So it might be color palettes or patterns or images that I really like. I also might just um, get my watercolors out. Now, I know that I showed all of my art journaling from last month, but simply doing an art spread, well, it's not simple, but doing an art spread and using different materials can get you in that mindset. But 
you, you need to be that mindset before you start those things and I understand that. So um, going on Pinterest and just getting some ideas from Pinterest is how I usually start my art spreads. Um, and then if I'm really not feeling creative and I've gone through and I've looked at other artwork or I've ripped out pages or I've tried to start something really simple, like a really simple project, and my house is clean and I'm still not feeling that creative, I like to then just get out of the house. So going for a walk and like going for a walk in nature is good, but even just going for a walk is also a good way for me to just get outside of the house. Um, because sometimes it's being stuck inside that really can not fuzz the mind, what's the right word? It can just get you out of that mindset. So um, going for a walk in nature especially because I'm looking at like beautiful leaves or the sun shining through or it might be focusing on an animal or even when I went for a walk the other afternoon the whole riverfront was filled with people just going for picnics and there was this group that was hosting a little birthday party and they were blowing balloons and I was just watching, not blowing balloons, sorry, blowing bubbles and I was watching the bubbles just float through the sky and it was so nice and I was just watching this because it had the big bubbles and I was just watching it like change shapes like as it was going through the air it was like changing its shape and getting bigger and smaller and floating and those are the little things that can inspire creativity just seeing that bubble float and change shape um yeah I, I guess it's just not so much focusing on those little things but it might be the colors that the bubble has on it that the rainbow pattern it just gives a little bit of that creative spark I don't know, did that make sense? <laughs> um, so let's jump into it then. I'm going to do a few little activities and then um, I'm actually, I've got a snail mail video that I need to create today. It's a collaboration with Studio Farah and she sent me the most beautiful botanical designs and um, yeah, this video should be up um, next week, yeah. Watercolour is a really great way to get some creative juices flowing because sometimes you don't have to have any plan at all. You can literally just grab a colour, pop some water in there and see how the water and the colours blend together. So I like starting with um, one colour and I like starting to put dots and this can be very playful. Now you don't need expensive watercolours, you can go to your local discount store if you've got one close by and the ones at the dollar store, variety stores or discount stores um, can still work very well for this technique and all you're doing is you're grabbing some water and you're just playing around with the pigment so how light and dark it is and then once you've got a, one color down you can then grab another color and then watch it blend so see how when I pop the orange down it starts blending into the yellow and then you can make it lighter or darker and then just playing around with these colors can sometimes be quite therapeutic in the morning but it's also really really nice way to just mess around with some paints and just not have an idea. I love doing this because at the end you're going to get this beautiful page full of colours and it's going to be like a little collage of waters, watercolour collage in a way because you're building on top of it. Um, and then you can make tags out of it, you can put your um, mail tag on top of this, you can watercolour your envelopes if you're sending nationally. I don't know if internationally it would be 
like if they would pull you up for um, watercolors on the front of an envelope, but also just messing around with different colors. So putting like a, a red down and then grabbing this orange one, trying to make the red a lot darker. And then grabbing the blue and see if I can make like a beautiful purple. So I need to put a lot more blue in there. And just like messing around. See now it's starting to make that beautiful purple color. Then you can put dots. And the different ways that you use your brush, so pressing it down at the top. You can also make flowers just by pressing it from the top. That's all that I do to make flowers and then I might put like a blue dot in the middle and then watch it bleed out. But it's really, really fun. Like I really enjoy watercolors and this is a great way to get creative. And then once it dries, you can go over the top of some colors. Like the blue and the yellow will then turn into green. And then if you add more water to the edges, it will like bleed out and it will make that like inky effect where it bleeds into each other. And then adding a lot of water and then adding that blue and just watching the way that the water moves around, it's really relaxing and it can really spark some creativity in the mornings or, or whenever you're crafting really. I just say the mornings because I'm often starting my day with some crafts. And then you can have a look around the page and think, maybe you'll add some green into that. Now you can do this with any medium. It doesn't have to be watercolor. So if you like using oil pastels or even paint, just get whatever medium it is and don't try to draw or do anything with that um, art material that you're using. Simply just play around with it. And then it takes the pressure off to create anything beautiful or anything for a specific reason. And it's just allowing you to get into the creative flow and not think about it. And you'd be surprised how it turns out. So as you can see, I'm just building one color at a time and I'm just focusing on the way that the colors blend together. three tags out of this. Cool. So they will so I cut my triangle off. And then you guys told me just to flip it so it creates the perfect shape on the other side if you don't have a tag maker. And 
and then I feel like that's way too <coughs> tall at the top. So I'm just going to cut it off like that. How cool is that tag? You will never see a tag like this bought. So I recommend you guys making these. They're super fun. And they get the creative juices flowing. <laughs> Let me make the other two. So as I said previously, sometimes I have lots of projects to do and I'm just not feeling creative. So I've actually got 14 letters to send off to you guys um, this month. So I haven't started on the envelopes and I like the letters that I send to you guys looking beautiful. So what I'm going to do now to try to get some creative juices flowing, because it can be overwhelming when I see a stack of envelopes and I know that it's going to take me hours to decorate these. Um, a really easy thing for me to do is to put the stack up there, grab a few Flo and Frankie magazines and just pick out patterns, pictures and colours that I like. And what I'll do is I'll start working on these envelopes but I'm only going to put a few patterns and pictures down. I'm not going to have it fully complete because to make one mail art it can take me like half an hour. So to do 14 of them that would take me days. <laughs> um, so just doing it little bit by little bit at a time it actually speeds up the process because I'm not thinking about how am I going to make this mail perfect. So I'll give you an example. So I've just covered up the address on the front here, but this is mail art that I usually send out to you guys. I've got a stamp, I've got little bits of um, stationery that I've used from my collection. So under here is actually some see-through paper, washi tape. I've got stickers on here. This is a sticker from my collection. I've even got the logo stamped on that says my stationery collection, as well as ripped pages from a book, and then also my sticker that I'm um, selling at the moment from my new collection. So altogether, I would have had to think about the composition, the colouring, so how the greens look together. So I wanted to be botanical. So as you can see, even on this little sticky here, there's um, some of these flowers. And then I've got the green here with the flower behind, this green on this side. And then I've got the actual ripped page from this book. And then this one that looks like a ripped page from the book. And then I had these things over here to kind of make it look a little bit vintagey. And then the whole composition comes together. So even though this took me a while, an easy way to get started on these projects is instead of doing 14 all at once, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start ripping things out of these and then just adding them to these envelopes bit by bit. All I'm going to do is I'm going to grab scissors and some double-sided tape and just start sticking it on and then at least I've started on this project it gets the creative juices flowing it gives me ideas for later projects and I might also find images out of here that I can use in um, in like my collages or art journaling and things like that so I'm gonna actually play music through this because I actually want to listen to music while I'm doing this because it's going to put me in the right heads like mindset and it's just a lot nicer just to rip, cut, stick um, with some music on. So enjoy and I'll show you what these 14 envelopes look like. And these are going to be sent to you guys. So you'll start seeing what your mail art's going to look like when it arrives. So let's get started. <laughs> Bye. 
finish cutting up all the magazines and sticking down the patterns and the images that I loved. So I'll show you what they look like. Now these aren't completely finished mail art like to send out yet um, because I still want to add a few elements on it like little stickers and some washi tape here and there and also a few stamps. So I'll show you these ones that I have done. Um, and this was a really fun project because as you can see like something like this I'm still going to add like um, a little label on it and some washi tape and some stamps and some stickers so it was just a really easy way to get through 14 envelopes. This took me um, around an hour and a half to create all these. And let me just move this so the shadow is not coming down. Um, so this took me about an hour and a half to create all these. And it was really, really like soothing. So I actually felt like I was enjoying this process because I was just flipping through magazines, listening to my podcast. I had the air con on because it's quite hot in here. <laughs> and then I was just sipping my tea. So... Um, I was just looking at all the pretty colors and while I was looking at the colors it was actually getting um, I was getting some more creative ideas I was looking at the things like the flowers or the oranges or even the spots and thinking what other creative um, projects I can do with my videos that I'm going to be filming for the rest of the day so I had lots of fun so yeah there's the first that's my first idea of a way that can just get you in that mindset and start creating and then the things that come out of it might be that you want to start working with these colors more or drawing these flowers like even just looking at these flowers it might be fun to watercolor something like this like draw a little um, vase up and then put sprigs of flowers coming out of it so I hope you got some great ideas from just creating these tags and then also just creating some collages. So my last thing I'm going to recommend today is if you're in a bit of a creative rut and you want to get the creative juices flowing, starting a 30-day um, art challenge was a really great way for me um, to just experiment with lots of materials. So I always recommend that if you've got materials that you don't use that often, just work with them and just put marks on paper. You don't have to think that you're going to create artwork with those materials, but simply just... Um, learning how the brushes feel on the paper, how the colours blend together, you can mix the colours around, see if they smudge. It's really fun just to see how materials work and how they blend or, or the way that they movement in your hands. Another thing that I wanted to show you was my Wreck This journal. So I got this book because I, I've always I've seen lots of YouTubers actually um, wreck the journal and I've always wanted to do one for myself but this was a way that really it, it opened up a lot of new ideas for me basically so this journal gives you instructions to do and you just follow through so I've got a little mini mail there and it tells you just really simple tasks so you can do this in your own art journal if you've got one so something like, I'll start with this one. This one simply said, color this page red on purpose. So I got all my red um, paints and um, stamps that I could find, washi tape, and I just had fun with red. I wasn't trying to make artwork, but it made me more creative because I was thinking, oh, I'm pretty sure I did this with just dots the whole way through, and I think there was tissue paper under this one, and it's just a fun way of just doing something simple. And like I um, have said multiple times, you know, getting creative isn't about producing the most amazing artwork. It's starting out is playful and having fun with it. So pour or spill something here, like it, this one said, draw fat lines, use your hands, like this one was stick leaves down. So this isn't like a, a visually appealing book going back over it, but it was so much fun. Like this one's like crumple paper and I stuck all these little guys down and... I've got this whole video of me creating this journal on YouTube if you want to go check it out. Um, but yeah, you can write your own prompts down for the day or as I said, do your own 30 day challenge. So bring this book with you in the shower so it got wet, rub dirt, 
I stuck like nearly all of my washi tape, well not nearly all of them, but a lot of them. Like I put tea, um, sorry this one's coffee all over it. And just had fun with it. I look back and I see fun, <laughs> basically. It's not a journal that I look back on to go back to see ideas, but this is a journal that I look back on it was like that was a fun day or a couple of days that we had creating this one. So I hope that gave you a few creative ideas to get back into it. So start out by, if you don't have um, some watercolours, just using your art materials and just putting marks on paper and see what patterns you can create. Um, you can turn them into tags like I have. Just start collaging, ripping up some papers and seeing what comes about it. As I said, I didn't finish any of those envelopes, but I was purely just ripping up pages and sticking them down and noticing the colours and the patterns and the words and the pictures. Or you can do something like an art um, exercise where you're messing around with like for this one, just prompts or the 30 day challenges. And like I said earlier in this video, you might just need to clear your mind, clean the house or go for a walk and just clear the mind so you can come back and create. Cause sometimes when you've got a lot of to do, like things on your to do list, you don't want to create. So um, other than that, I hoped you found some inspiration out of this video. Um, and yeah, quite a chatty video today. So I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments um, if you've done any of these exercises or what exercises you like to do to get in the creative mindset. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you guys either on YouTube or next month. Bye.